Hello dear students. Today we are going to discuss the next topic. That means next next chapter in your syllabus. This is chapter number seven, looping in JavaScript. In the previous chapter that we have learned, and that in this chapter also it was discussed that a program can be written in three different forms: sequential basis, selective basis, another one is loop or looping. Sequential that one after another statement that we have done executed. Then selection it comes uh, under switch and if else and loop it comes. Now what is loop? You can see in sequential we have seen that one ex statement is executed. Then after execution the next statement will will be executed. That means every statement in the program will be executed once. But in case of selection process if or switch we have seen some of the part of the program. <coughs> Are executed and some part of can be omitted. That's it. That's why it is known as selection. And this uh, chapter will discuss about looping. Now, looping is means it means that to execute some statements repeatedly. Okay. That means if someone asks you to display one to five. Then we simply we can write document dot write one document dot write two document dot write three like that, up to five. But if someone ask you to write uh, to display one to one lakh, one to one lakh or one million, if it is asked to display, that you cannot write one million time that document dot write. It will be a very lengthy program. So how to reduce up such repetitive steps using loop? That things we will discuss in this chapter. So looping is the process to do uh, to execute some statements repeatedly. This is the definition of loop. You underline in your book. The definitions are also given. <coughs> so always a loop has three statements. Now what are the uses of three statements? Let's understand with this diagram. Here in this diagram, I'll try to make you understand actually what happens if. Simply, we think about our normal life. That if we start from somewhere, and if we want to go to some place, then how it should be executed? Let us take first example. There are two diagrams I have drawn here. First, we take the first one. That let's see. <coughs> uh, here, in this first diagram, you can see. Here, if we start from this location. Okay, if we start from this location and you are trying to move from bottom to top, bottom to top, the arc I have given. So you have started from zero and we need to go to the end point which is eight. Sorry, seven. So the location from where you will start that location is called initial position or uh, starting position. And here we can say this position is called initialization. The statement, first statement in in your looping, which is called initialization, means the starting position of your statement. So it will start from here, from zero, and we're trying to move from zero to seven upward. So every step you count, you can go for like this. That means we are increasing the value from zero to seven. Okay, we are increasing, and this statement is called increment. Remember that means when we go from bottom to top, that your initial value always it increases. It increases. Now up to how much you need to move? If you want to move at the end, that means up to seven you want to move. Then what will happen? Your initial value, you see, that your initial value either less than or equal to end point. If we use less than or equal, means end point is seven. Your initial value starts from zero. That means your initial value. If you want to move to till the end point up to seven, then you have to use less than or equal. Or if you want to stop before seven, then you have to use only less than sign. Remember this one. <clears throat> less than equal sign will use when you want to move to the at the end point before just the end point. If you want to stop, then you can use only less than sign. According to your situation of your program. Or according to the demand of the program, you have to use less than, or sometimes it may be less than or equal. So this portion is called 
condition remember condition so we have found three statement in a loop initialization found increment or increment we found and condition we have found so here it is from bottom to top in that way movement if we come from top to bottom then what happen top to bottom if it is there let's <coughs> let's see what is what happens from top to bottom so removing this all lines here if we move from now bottom sorry top to bottom now your initial position will be this one seven your end point will be now zero now from top to bottom you are coming so that's why it is decreasing the value it is decreasing so that's why it is called decrement initialization also will be there decrement also will be there and condition is you know see the symbol is changed now your initial value it was from seven from seven to zero that you are moving so greater than equal or maybe only greater than according to the situation if you want to go to up to zero then greater than equal or before zero if you want to stop then you have to use only greater than sign so these are the three statements always you will find in a loop what are these three statements number one initialization number two condition and number three increment or decrement remember so <clears throat> in the next page you will find that these are the three uh, statements in a loop you can see these are the three statements initialization condition and increment decrement okay now what is initialization mean the meaning of initialization we are doing this initialization from the previous chapter okay initialization it means when we declare a variable and at the time of declaring the variable if we put any value to the variable this is called initialization this is initialization you can see the example i have given here variable a equal to 10 now variable a where a this is the declaration of variable at the same time if we give the value to the variable this will be your initialization okay remember the definition maybe it is not written in your book but this definition also very important now what are the three types of loop you can see while loop to while loop and for loop let us discuss one by one loop first while loop <clears throat> here i have written entry control loop now why it is entry control you will understand first let us see the syntax of this loop syntax is what syntax means what the format how it will execute like if also you have done switch also you have done here there also we got some syntax so here also syntax is there syntax is means here while the condition you have to put the condition that condition just now we have discussed remember whether it is top to bottom or maybe bottom to top you may be use sometimes greater than equal or less than equal or greater than or less than according to the situation you will understand so till this condition true your loop will continue like it will move in that way when it will become false stop that time it will come out from the body of the loop this is the body of the loop say number the statements which will be executed repeatedly that statements are called the body of the loop you just underline in your book what is called body of the loop this line also you understand underline so the statements that what are, that statements will be executed repeatedly these statements are called the body of the loop now to, to understand this one that let's see uh, the example here i have taken an example to display 1 to 100 so to display 1 to 100 simply we can refer to the previous diagram so one that means from bottom to top we are going 1 to 100 bottom to top so here also we have to use increment operator remember increment because from bottom to top always it comes increment and and another thing which condition you have to use greater than or less than here we have to use greater than equal greater than because bottom to top we are going till the end value so let's see here html body as it is that we write here initialization it is done bottom to top so i equal to 1 you have to go from 1 to 1 to 100 so i equal to 1 
and condition is C. Initial value less than or equal to end value. Just refer to the previous example. So that means diagram. Here you can see initial value less than or equal to end value. So end value is 100. Initial value is 1, and we have to go till 100. That's why less than or equal sign you have to use here. Okay. So let's see. Till this condition true, your I value will be displayed. Value it will be displayed because it is written outside of the quotation. And plus dr means to display in the separate line, different lines. So first of all, the value of i, i is 1. 1 less than or equal to 100. It is true. If it is true, it will come within the body of the loop. This is the body of the loop within the braces, compound statement. Means two statements will be executed if the condition is true. So condition is true. So document dot write output. Document dot write is the output line. The value of i will be displayed. So what is the value of i? This one. After taking the output, displaying the output, it will take new line, br. Then the value of i will be incremented. That means it was one. Now it will be two. Now again, repeat. Two less than or equal to hundred. Again it comes two. Condition is true. So document dot write. It will display the value of i. What is the value of i? It is 2. So in that way, it will continue. Let's see the execution in the next page. Sorry. Our execution I have not uh, given here. <coughs> okay. In that way, it will keep on executing. It will keep on executing uh, till the end of the loop. So one display 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, in that way it will go on. When it will become 100, I will will be 100, 100 less than or equal to 100. So when 100 less than or equal to 100, it will come. Then you can see 100 will display, I will will become 101. So 101 less than or equal to 100, it is false. So it will stop. So let's see how actually it is going on. Here I'll try to make you understand. So first the value of i was 1. Okay. So first iteration. This is called iteration step. Iteration or you can say iteration 1. First iteration the value of i was 1. 1 less than or equal to 100. So it is true. If it is true, we'll get the output. We'll get output. The value of i is output. So i was 1 then the value of i will be incremented by 1, which is 2. The so next iteration. Iteration 2. In iteration 2, 2 less than or equal to 100. This is also true. So if it is true, we get output. Means 2 will be here. This is the output line 2. Then i will become 3. I will become 3. Okay. So in that way, Iteration 3 will come, 4 will come, 5 will come, and if, when it will become 100, so 100, 100 iteration, 100 less than or equal to 100, it is true, so output will get as 100, then it will become 101, then 101 less than or equal to 100, it is false, so it will stop. Okay? <coughs> Okay, the next program you can see here why it is entry control then because before going to execute the body of the loop we have checked the condition first if the condition is true then the body of the loop will be executed that's why it checks it checks the entry of the execution that means your body of the loop will be executed or not before entering to the execution it will check the condition. If condition is true, then the body of the loop will be executed. That's why it is called entry control loop. Before enter to the loop, it checks the condition. That's why it is entry control loop. But the next loop we'll discuss that one. Do while loop, which is exit control loop. Writing is same, just we have to change the location of while. Okay? Now you can see the syntax. While it was in the while loop this part it was in the beginning and there was no do in place of do just this was there and nothing change remember if the conversion comes in your exam 
from one loop to another from while to do while to while to while you no need to change the coding part anything just you have to replace do with your while and nothing to be changed all the statements all the lines wherever it is written it will be in the same position in your final result okay so here it is found that before checking the loop it directly enters to the body of the loop directly it enters checking it will be done at the end of the loop that's why it is called exit control it will exit from the loop or not it decides that's why it is called exit control loop before checking the condition it enters to the loop remember that is why it is called exit control loop so same program if we do using do while then what will be the changing here just you can see this part we have brought to the end at the end of the loop and remaining statements are in the same position same position no need to change just uh, here do that means this line will be there initialization line then do directly document dot write the value of i will be displayed which is 1 it will become 2 2 less than equal to 100 so it is true so it will repeat 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 when it will become false stop okay this is about your do well statement the third loop is for loop for loop is also entry control loop okay because it is also the simil uh, uh, it also do the similar way execution like for loop sorry while loop while loop and for loop both are uh, both execution both loop do their execution <coughs> in similar way but one different thing you will find in for loop that as we know a loop has three statements initialization condition and increment decrement and in these two different loops while loop and do while loop that we have found these three statements were written in three separate places but in case of while loop all the three statements will be written in a same line in a single line separated by semicolon remember separated by semicolon the syntax you can see initialization then semicolon condition then semicolon increment or either increment or decrement then body of the loop this one now here i have given some arc to make you understand what is actually happening here okay it executes say uh, like while loop so in while loop what happens first condition check then if the condition is true sorry initialization done then condition is checked if condition true body of the loop executes if after execution of the body then it goes for increment and decrement the similar way here also it goes first initialization is done after doing initialization it goes for condition after doing condition it doesn't go here remember it doesn't go for increment or decrement okay it doesn't go for increment or decrement it it comes from if the condition becomes true it comes to the body so after execution of the body then it goes for increment or decrement so whatever written in the increment and decrement then it goes for again checking the condition if the condition is true again it comes to the body then here we can have seen that initialization is executed only once although it is written in the same line but after condition checking it comes to the body of the loop okay and this process this process continues till the condition becomes false till the condition becomes false remember this execution in your book also it is given three steps are given uh, working up for loop very important question for your exam you mark this one in your book working up for loop so this the same program if we display 1 to 100 if we do using for loop then how it will be done now see very one line only one line because this is initialization is done then semicolon the condition is there there is no bracket remember only the condition part you have to write i less than equal to 100 then at the end increment and decrement so how it will execute initialization done it checks the condition yes it is true if it is true process is not triggered because only one line to be executed if a simple statement is written after any loop then it should be without quotation sorry uh, braces and it is always under the loop remember this document dot write is under the for loop it is not outside of the loop 
if two lines are given and there is no brushes then first line is within the loop and second line is outside of the loop remember these things so one less than equal to 100 it is true so if it is true according to the diagram condition checking then it will go to the loop body so this is the body the value of i display i it is what one after displaying the value of i according to the diagram it goes where increment decrement so it will go here i plus plus means it will become two after increment or decrement again you can see according to diagram condition checking so it will come for again checking the condition so two now two less than equal to 100 again it will within the body two display three increment in, will happen then three less than equal to 100 in that way it will continue till the condition becomes false so this all about these three loops in this chapter okay for loop for loop and do while loop so in the for loop also we have found what the condition is checked first then it decides the body of the loop will execute or not that's why it is called exit sorry entry controlled loop there are two entry control loop one while and the other one is for and do while is the exit control loop remember the two another <coughs> one example i have given here to convert sometimes it comes in your exam okay to convert the following loop for loop to do while loop so one for loop is given and you have to convert to do while loop so to convert any loop from anywhere you have to know first the syntax of that particular loop if you don't know the syntax then you can't you can't you have to learn all the syntax okay so for loop here it is given <coughs> the first line is the initialization line x equal to 1 comma x equal to 0 so two three variable can be initialized no problem after initialization finished you have to put semicolon then condition and this is increment or decrement so it is given in for loop and here you can see as i have told if two lines are written two statements are written and we don't without braces then first statement is within the loop and next statement is outside of the loop so here s equal to s plus x this line is within the loop and document dot write is outside of the loop that means when the statements will become false then we will get the output so let's see how to convert to do while so as in a do while first executes the body then the condition is checked so initialization will be as it is it will be written before do then do then the body of you have to write the body how it is written what are the statements are written within the body this is a one statement which is in the body and this increment or decrement this is also within the body you have to write you can see this is within the body but this document dot write it should be outside of the loop because in the given loop it is not in the within the loop it is outside of the loop so x plus plus and that means after s equal to s plus plus you go here as x plus plus that's why x plus plus we have brought here within the body of the loop then after increment and decrement as we know the condition will be checked so you have to write, write the condition here so only remaining statements are for which one document dot write so it is written outside of the loop so here we have closed the body after closing while then you have to write document dot write statement okay so last two statements of the chapter which is break statement and continue statement remember what is the use of break so as we know loop ends when a loop finished it got go, it executes at the end of the uh, loop value as you see end value okay so sometimes we need to end a loop before the ending point before the ending in between sometimes it may be required uh, according to the demand of the program sometimes it requires that you need to stop a loop before the ending point or that is before the stopping point so for that reason we can use break statement you underline in your book the definition of break statement so break statement is used to get out from a loop before reaching to the uh, stopping condition you can say okay so here you can see break statement so to un- make you understand break statement i have taken an example here very simple example i have taken 
which starts from x x less than equal to n so this is the stopping condition as you know that means according to the rule it should go up to 10 the values uh, when the value of x will reach 11 then the loop should stop but you see before going to 11 will stop the loop before how to stop you see here here another condition it is given if the value of x is 4 simply I have taken 4 3 2 1 just to make you understand I have given then it will break means it will stop otherwise that means this condition break will execute when this condition if will become true if when if becomes true then break will execute if if becomes false then this one document that right then x plus plus then it will repeat okay so let's start again to make you understand here uh, execution part you see execution the next page it starts from one so iteration one that's why i have given i one means iteration one so one less than equal to ten first the while loop is checked x value is one so x means one less than equal to ten which is true if it is true inside of the loop you go okay inside of the loop means body of the loop so when it comes to the body of the loop it is seen it is seen that one another condition is given x equal to four that means one equal to four here to check so it is false as I have told that if the condition becomes false in if it will go for the output so what is the output output the value of x is displaying so output here you can see x equal to one here it is given x equal and the value of x is displayed after that x plus plus so x plus plus is done here it is two okay again repeat two less than or equal to ten it is true two equal to equal to four which is false so output we are getting x equal to two again three three less than or equal to ten true if it is true uh oh, sorry one line here, here this mistakenly it is written this is output directly it will not come output first it will check 3 less than or equal to 10 which is true 3 equal to 4 it will check 3 equal to 4 previously like that 3 equal to 4 which is false so if it is false we will get output x equal to 3 then it becomes x equal to 4 ok so in the next iteration 4 equal to 100 sorry 4 less than or equal to 10 which is true 4 equal to equal to true 4 equal to equal to 4 which is true so when it becomes true break statement and counter if it is break then stop the program so you can see up to 3 we are getting output we are not getting output till the end value ok up to 11 or up to 10 we are not getting we have stopped the program when it reaches to a particular condition so for this type of reason we can use break statement to break to get out from a loop before the ending point everywhere we have seen that we just end a loop when we reach to the end point so sometimes it requires before going to the end point we need to get out of the loop so if such condition arises then we can use break statement the next statement is there which is called continuous statement so continuous statement is little bit different than break. In continuous statement, we will go to the end of the loop. But sometimes it happens, it requires that we need to skip some point. Skip, depending on some condition, we can skip some uh, statement within the program. So if we want to skip some point of the programs or statements of a program, then we can use continue remember you underline the uh, definition of continue in your book and don't write break and continue in capital letter it should be always in small letter because these are uh, these are what keywords so here the similarly i have taken an example here a equal to 0 a less than equal to 5 a less than 5 and here i have taken a plus plus before end 
in the previous example it was taken at the end increment it was taken at the end of the document dot write but here i have taken a plus plus here why it is taken you will understand so here it is written if this condition becomes true the value of a becomes 3 then it continues now what does actually it happens here let us exam get this uh, execution here so a equal to 0 0 less than 5 which is true if it is true then come inside of the loop so a will become 1 because it is written a plus plus so 1 equal to equal to 3 which is false so when it becomes false we get the output the output the value of a we are getting output okay then again repeat repeat the value of a already incremented by 1 so 1 less than equal to 5 less than 5 which is false true a equal to 2 it becomes that means incremented the value of a so 2 equal to equal to 3 a equal to equal to 3 which is false if it is false we get the output okay then again repeat 2 less than equal to 5 then it becomes 3 3 equal to 3 true now when 3 equal to 3 it becomes true continuous means you will not get the output for this particular value you can see there is no output for See, skipped. It is skipped. So this is the reason, uh, this is the use of continuous statement. Then again you repeat, when it will skip, means when it will become true, when it will become true, it will skip, uh, return the control from here to the while again. So while again, the value of A, uh, which is here you can see 3 less than 5, a equal to 4, which is false. 4 equal to equal to 3, sorry, a equal to 4, it becomes a equal to 4 by incrementing. 4 equal to 3, which is false. So if it is false, we are getting the output. Again, in the similar way, we are getting the output for 5. Okay. When it becomes 5 less than 5, then we can stop. So here you can see the value 3 is skipped. So to skip some statements, Depending on some condition, we can use continuous statement. So this is about break and continuous. The difference between continuous and break, what is there? In case of break, we, can, we have seen that uh, before reaching the end point, if we want to get out of a loop, we can use break statement. And if we want to skip some uh, statements in a program, then we can use continue. In continue, we wish to go to the end value, but in case of break statement we don't go to the end value of the or stopping condition of the loop so this is about your all the uh, topics in this chapter if this chapter is completed here i hope everyone has understood this uh, concept okay uh, if you have any uh, doubt you may ask me uh, through whatsapp or in the evening time i will come live and that time you may ask me regarding any question Okay, thank you.